A big thanks to Google Career Certificates for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Now the setup might look a little different than usual and that is because we are doing a very computer focused video today. I'm actually going to be walking through my entire design process from start to finish of kind of how I mood board a space or come up with a concept for a space. And in the past on my channel, I actually did a video which was called how I design a room from start to finish. And that kind of went through the actual process of a makeover, kind of starting with my first steps of what I do all the way through the entire process leading up to the final reveal of a space. But then I was thinking to myself that I've never really done a video where you guys have seen how I think about the selections that I actually do for spaces. And I get asked that all the time, you know, why I selected this chair or why you selected that sofa for this space. And I thought this video would be nice to kind of see a live version of how I go ahead and design a space, maybe to get you guys thinking a little out of the box as well. And I'm actually going to be designing a space that has no floor plan and no budget because I solely want this to be about the selection of items and kind of the process of how I go through through color, pattern, silhouette, texture, shape, style, whatever it might be, like how I kind of select the items that go hand in hand and from different stores and kind of make a cohesive space in the end. Now, before jumping onto the design process, which is primarily on your computer, I wanna share with you guys something else you can also do on your computer. And that is because this portion of today's video is sponsored by Google Career Certificates, which is such an incredible program I just recently found out about and I had to share with you guys because it could really be beneficial to one or many of you out there. Now, this incredible program by Google can actually get you on the fast track to in-demand jobs without previous experience or a college degree. And what I mean by this is essentially you can take courses with Google Career Certificates that give you all of the expert knowledge. They're actually taught by experts working at Google that have an incredible skill set under, you know, said topic, which there's a bunch of different topics ranging from digital marketing and e-commerce, data analytics, IT support, project management, and UX design. And one of those might pique your interest, but I love that Google really honed in on what in-demand skills employers are looking for that they can't really find, you know, employees to fill those spaces for and created these career certificates that are offered at a super affordable rate that you can just do at home, gain the knowledge you need, and then get a job, which is absolutely crazy. Skills that employers are hiring for are things like email marketing, marketing analytics, engaging with customers, and designing and running an online store, which is something that you can't really learn out in school. I mean, you could, but you'd have to go through lots and lots of money, assets, time, and you can complete a certificate in just under six months with only devoting about 10 hours a week to it. And it's only $39 a month through Coursera, which if you think about that for six months, $39 a month is unreal. Like it is so, so crazy that they offer such an amazing certificate program. The median salary for people that finish their certificate and get a job is around $66,000. So if you'd like to check out and maybe enroll in a Google career certificate, you can go to grow.google slash certificates and I'll put the link at the top of the description box below. And lastly, I do want to thank Google Career Certificates so much for sponsoring this portion of today's video. But yes, we are designing a space today. I have absolutely no idea how this is going to come out or start. So let's dive into the design. So we're gonna start designing this space and I don't even know what space I wanna do. I'm thinking like more of a living room just because I feel like that's more generic and I don't know, I feel like we can find a lot of pieces for a living room. So the first thing I wanted to do actually was select a rug. This is something that I do all the time. If I don't have like a desired piece in mind or a focal piece, I'll either go with like a rug or an artwork or one statement piece of furniture that's gonna dictate the design of the entire room. So it can kind of be one of those three, either a rug, statement furniture piece, or a piece of artwork. And I think today I'm gonna go with a rug just because I think it can give us a little bit more of a direction. And I'm checking out CB2 right now now to see if there's any rugs that kind of speak to me oh my gosh look how cool these are love those oh you guys i have been really really into this rug here this has been a rug i've been wanting to utilize it's pretty expensive it's 13.99 but i think i'm going to use it for the base of our project um and go in firstly with our rug which i just go in and screenshot that and this is going to be our foundation. I always suggest creating a mood board because you can really see the pieces together. Even if they're photographed differently and they might come off a little differently, you can at least get a visual look at what everything looks like paired together. So we're going to start with the rug, which is going to be larger. And also this is kind of going to dictate our color palette. And now I want to go in with the sofa, which I definitely want some form of funky sofa. But since our rug is a little bit more expensive, 
I think I'm gonna go in with something cheaper. I kind of feel like more warm tones would look nice for this. So something either dark brown or like a rust color. Rust sofa. Okay, so we didn't get anything there. Let me actually go to Google. I'm just gonna type in rust sofa and see what kind of sofas pop up that are more on the rust side. Oh, this one from All Modern is quite nice. I actually like that one a lot. It has like the wood leg and this more rounded arm shape. Let's see what that will look like in the space. I'm just gonna do a close up screenshot. I mean, that can work so far. I think that can be a cool vibe, but I definitely think other things might dictate a change in the furniture. I'm not too sure. We did also have these other options. This one's kind of cool from Crate and Barrel. It has that chunkiness to it, which I feel like the rug kind of feels heavy already. So I want something a little bit lighter that has a leg. Okay, but why am I into this? Okay, this is a slip cover for an Ikea sofa, which would be a little bit more affordable actually. So let me try that out. Oh, I actually like that more. I do like that but I feel like it might need two, like directly across from each other. Now that we have our rug and our potential sofa option, which could change, I do want to go in with some accent chairs. Probably would do two accent chairs in this space. I kind of feel like they would be nice as like a black leather, almost to add a little bit of a masculine edge to this. Let's see what kind of black leather accent chairs we could find. Oh, oh my gosh, these kinds, you guys. Ooh, I love, oh, so pretty. I love this chair, it's so cool. This is pretty, this like leather lounger. Seems pretty simple, but like very depthy, which I think could be nice. So for this particular one, I'm pulling the color from the rug. So I did the rust as like a statement, but then imagine if we had these two chairs on the opposite side of the rug. So maybe like that would be on one side. So this is where we're at so far. We have like a foundation for the space. Now, since we have a ton of squares, you can see we have a lot of square shapes going on here with the rug, with the couch, with even the chair, there's lots of squares. I think we should do more of an oval coffee table just to break up all of those straight lines. And so for that, I probably would just go and type in oval coffee table. This is what I do. And then I just try to kind of narrow it down to what I feel like fits in that space. Oh, this is so pretty but not the right look. This is kind of cool, honestly. Okay, look how beautiful the top of that coffee table is. That is stunning. I love this coffee table. It has some tones from what we're working with. So it has the yellowy brass tone back in the rug. So if I go back to the rug, we have that kind of brassy look, which is gonna pull it in. And then we have the deepness from our accent chairs and the rug as well, which is also emulated in the coffee table itself. So I definitely think we can get away with a coffee table like this. And I think the artsy look of it kind of pairs back nicely with the rug and the couch that we select. I'm just gonna cut this out quickly. And by the way, guys, if you're wondering, I'm using Photoshop, but you can use like Google Docs online or something. I always use sites like that as well. And I also love how the coffee table feels very heavy as well. I think because it, it's dark in color and it has those chunky legs on either side, makes it feel heavy. It's not very light, which we need that because our rug's also heavy, so it's gonna ground our space. But now we need to go into light fixtures. Definitely want more of like a chandelier style light fixture. These here just seem to be a little too farmhousey, a little too feminine feeling. I almost feel like, again, we need something with some chunkiness to it. I don't want it to be lightweight. It definitely needs to feel heavy. Our design's kind of feeling a little bit heavy at the moment. And I want to keep the central look of the design heavy. So the rug, coffee table, and light above, I want all of those to feel kind of heavy. See, I almost feel like something like this could be fun, like a rustic drum looking pendant. I'm back over on CB2 because they really do have such great light fixtures. And I feel like the price of them too, it's, it's really not too bad. And I've really been loving this one, the Bruna Walnut Wood and Lennon Pendant. How beautiful is that? I also really like this one, the Tora Oak Pendant Light which actually I think I'm gonna grab this one because it's first of all, it's cheaper and I like the lightness of it. Like that seems like a really, really cool kind of vibe if we were to put that pendant light over the top. So now we have a wood tone introduced. This like oak wood color here is something that we wanna keep in mind for other wood tones that we might add throughout the space. So potentially like some oak wood side tables, that way we can start mixing and tying in different elements. So once you have like a couple pieces selected for a space, it's nice to go back to those pieces and tie in bits of each into your decor and accessories to make sure everything really flows in the end. I'm gonna go actually back online and look for some oak wood side tables. Okay, so we know that it's oak and again like this kind of structural shape 
just really feels nice for that rug style. I even like this kind of turned one, but this solid teak stump looks like it could be fun. I'm gonna grab that. And this is just pulling in some of those wood tones. So yeah, I think that's great. I definitely feel like there's something missing though. I like the kind of realm that we're going in so far. It still feels kind of flat to me at the moment um, and we need to amp it up a bit. Maybe some bookshelves, if we were to do like bookshelves across the wall, but I definitely wanna make that more affordable. So let's look at like, maybe like a walnut wood bookshelf. I do really like these simple ones that just kind of attach to the wall. Those are nice, the burrow ones. Ooh. I really like this here. I'm picturing this behind the sofa. If you were to put like four of them in a row or like three of them in the row, putting the sofa in front of this and having it as like a very nice backdrop to your sofa, I feel like that would look really pretty. And they're 224 each, which I don't think is too, too bad. But like imagine a couple of these just kind of lined up. Like if we had maybe one, two, Three. I wish those had nothing in them so we can kind of get more of a visual look at that. But something about this seems like it'd look really, really nice behind the sofa. So at the moment we have this working for us and I actually don't see anything that I need to pull, which is good because a lot of times in mood boards, I, I'll remove items, I'll add them, take them out, put them back, but always keep your screenshots kind of in one place because you can always move them back in and out. Honestly, maybe some artwork would be nice to incorporate. Shot by style. Let's do abstract. I definitely think we need abstract art for this, this room. It just feels more artistic to me. Something like this would be nice. Even something like this piece called paper pattern. I love this paper collage would be really, really cute. Ugh, even like these are so nice. Like I love these two. This one's great kind of bringing in the tone from the couch. That's what I'm doing. I'm mainly looking for colors that match the palette we already have, um, and then going from there. I'm gonna screenshot this piece, and I'm also gonna screenshot this piece. Let's see what a dark frame. I kinda like the dark frame on this too. All right guys, so I can already tell that the one is not gonna work. Like this one will work so much better than the other one. The other one looks super similar, and I actually, I don't even know if I like that, but I think I need it to be something maybe more like this artwork called linen. And I'm picturing this more so horizontal. And I'm gonna leave that over there for now and kind of maybe go back to that. I definitely wanna grab like at least three pieces of art just to get more of a direction for this space. I do really like this bird print as well. I think that's pretty. I think it would look better though in a black frame to pull that black. Okay, here's our bird print. I'm gonna place that over here. That actually ties in a little bit of the color from the light too. See how it has more of like a linen color to it and then so does the artwork. So that would be really nice. I'm still not obsessed with this artwork down here. It just needs to be a little bit more minimal. Or even like this, this person artwork. I love hanging pictures of random people in my home. I think it's so, so funny. Um, I have one here, look at her. Like that to me really ties kind of back to the sofa there. We need some sort of like media console. So I'm gonna type in like abstract media console. Cause I feel like this could be cool to have a media console that has, oh, like this is so, so pretty. Ooh, even this console from Urban is cool. It has like this rounded shape to it. It is a lighter wood, but I've been obsessed with mixing wood tones lately. I don't know what it is. What's this one? This is from All Modern. It's like reeded almost. I love how the bottom has like this, this slatting to it. It has some brass too, which definitely does tie back the legs of the coffee table. Again, kind of keeping those metals in alignment. Ooh, I like that a lot. That goes nicely also with the bookshelves above. I love the way that this is kind of turning out so far. So of course you could then mount a TV above there or I think we need a table lamp somewhere, which I definitely want to add. Okay, you guys, look at this light. So I actually ended up getting one of these lights for my little office nook makeover. I loved it so much, but I feel like this could be such a cute side table lamp as well. I feel like the vibe of this space is just getting very eclectic, which has been the style I've been going for lately. And then of course, we're also gonna want probably a couple throw pillows, maybe like two or three throw pillows and also some decor just to finish off kind of the base of the space. I feel like this gives us a great starting point. We're gonna go on my online store for some decor because I do have decor on my shop, which is really, really nice. 
Um, let's see. Oh, these candles. Oh my gosh. These new totem candles that are in the store, I am literally in love with. This like cast iron knot could be perfect on like the media console. Some baskets for sure. Or like these little trays. Oh, see, this is where we needed to be, you guys. Like this travertine sculpture pulling in more of that rust color and more of that kind of asymmetry look, which we've been going for. When it comes to the throw pillows for this face, I think something on the darker side, like this woven throw pillow would be nice. Maybe like a circle to break up all those squares. It's like a black circle shape. I do really love this. I also love the introduction of that dark green because it is a warm tone still. Um, I think this one's a little too crazy. I feel like the leather will be really nice to tie back the chair. Oh, they have it in black too. So let's add those three throw pillows, which we have this black one here. And then we have this green one, which is kind of a fun additional pop. And last but not least, this kind of brown one, maybe over, I'm going to pop it over here. Maybe we can do it on like the accent chair or something. The green one is, it's just not it for me. Maybe we can add this to the mix too. I feel like it also adds a light touch of femininity, which this space is feeling very masculine right now, which is fine, but I feel like this does add a nice touch. I love that we added that throw pillow. I really think that helped out a bunch. And then our decor elements, which we picked a couple from my shop online, like these candles, just ideal. How are these not perfection? Like, look at that, you guys. I love that. Our little sculpture. And just add that right over here. Kind of just getting an idea for the elements that are gonna be in the space and all of the color tones. And our last little piece would probably be these trays. They, I mean, they would go on the coffee table, so maybe like there. So now that we've created our general idea or our mood board, I'm gonna look back at this and see if there's something I don't love in this space. And there already is. I don't like the couch. I don't like the couch with everything else. I feel like everything else is very thought out and I feel like the couch seems too effortless. It just, it doesn't seem like the correct vibe for this space and I also feel like it might be a bit too heavy. I think I want something with a leg underneath it. So I'm gonna rework the couch. This Albany Park one, it's quite nice. Okay, so there is this rounded option as well, which is from apartment to B, which could work. I love that. I feel like also the pillows that we opted for would look so beautiful on that couch. It would emulate a little bit of our coffee table shape, which I think we could still keep because now that we have a rounded couch, I might go back in and want to do a rectangle coffee table, but I feel like this coffee table just really works nicely with our other selected items. That was it, you guys. That is how I design a space on my computer. So then from here, I would go into the ordering process of ordering everything for the space, or I would take this and then try to find pieces at thrift stores that match similar styles if I want to go for more of a budget-friendly option. Whenever you do make a mood board, I always do suggest putting in pieces that even you can't afford because they are going to spark inspiration. They're going to give you ideas and you might even see something similar that you can either DIY or flip or upcycle that could take place of that on your mood board. And what I always suggest doing is to save a digital copy on your computer of your mood board. And if let's say you DIY something or you find a piece that could replace something within, snap a photo and replace it in your mood board to get a feel for how that piece will look in that particular space. Um, and that's really everything I do, you guys. This is exactly how I design a space from start to finish. Most of the times, of course, I have a bit more direction, but for this one, I really wanted to start nowhere and see where the space would take me. And it kind of took me to this very rusty, masculine, but still has a slight feminine edge to it. I feel like with the light fixture and some of the artwork and pillows, but I just really, really like the space. It definitely screams Lone Fox, and I hope that you guys also like it. And that, guys, is how I design a space from start to finish, from kind of concept to getting everything together that I need for the space. Now, of course, I probably will add more elements than what I add uh, to the space if I was to design it in terms of decor and stuff, just to fill in the bookshelves and everything. I just wanted to give you guys an overview of how I mood board, how I kind of think about design as I work on it. But I really hope that this gave you some insight or some direction when you go to creating your next mood board or, you know, if you're in the design field and you just wanted an idea of how I design my spaces, this is exactly how I do it. Now, this gives me a great visual representation. You can 
also put notes on here about, you know, things you want to change, add notes here or there. Uh, but this is my mood board for this space. Thank you guys again for watching today's video. I hope that you loved it. And if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see any more videos like this of like my processes or like behind the scenes or whatever it might be, totally let me know. I can definitely do it. Uh, so leave a comment in the comment section below and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye everybody.